Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at dynamic paint. We are going to fake sand movement by using dynamic paint. So let's get into it. I'm going to delete everything in the scene and I'm going to add a plane. Let's resize it to about six. I'm going to add a modifier, a subdivision modifier in edit mode, control R, and I'm going to add, let's say, five cuts on each side. You can also do that by just subdividing the plane. Now I'm going to increase the viewport to three so I can see the results a bit better. So this is going to be my sand object and we can rename it into sand. Next, I'm going to create the rake. I'm going to speed up the part of this uh, process because it's just very simple modeling. We are going to use this rake to move the sand underneath it. So how are you going to do that? It's fairly easy. We'll be using dynamic paint. So we have to set up our objects correctly. Now I'm going to choose the sand object and I'm going to go down into the physics tab, physics properties rather, and choose dynamic paint. Add canvas. So this is going to be our canvas. And I'm going to change from paint to waves. And the damping, I'm going to change it to one. Just put it full on blast one. Now I'm going to choose the teeth of the rake, which are going to be touching the actual sand. And I'm going to put the dynamic paint not the canvas, but the brush. Add the brush and change the paint mode to mesh volume plus property. I've also parented these two parts to the main part over here, so to the main stick, so whenever I move that, everything else moves. And now if we lower, we can see it's displacing our object. However, it's not very high in resolution. We get more definition by increasing the viewport subdivisions. So now when we pull it back, we're getting some very good displacement. Now let's try and find the optimal size of subdivision. So I'm just going to lower the viewport to four, see if that works a bit better. I'm still pressing play and seeing how it behaves. This is enough uh, definition, at least for me. I can stop the animation, add a subdivision modifier after the dynamic paint. I can increase the viewport to two. And now if I press play, it's going to lag a bit. But if I pull it back, I can see we have very firm imprints of the sand. Press W to shade smooth. And that's basically it for our sand object. I'm just going to turn off in the viewport because otherwise the system is going to lag too much. I want the rake to leave an imprint in a circular motion. So I'm gonna add a circle, a Bezier circle. Just going to pull it up a bit. I'm going to rescale it to a size of two. Control A to reset the scale. I'm just going to rotate it on the x-axis so it's touching the actual sand or rather just protruding a bit through the sand. I'm going to go on top view, move it on the y-axis to 1.5. I'll rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees and I'll choose follow curve. Now let's see what happens. Animate the path. And let's see. So this is what we get. Now I just have to turn it by 90 degrees and now it should follow the path correctly. And we get a perfect circle. If we go into our sand object and increase our subdivision, we get a much more precise result. And again, if we open the subdivision after dynamic paint, it's going to lag a bit, but we get indentations. So that's how you can make a really easy sand moving animation. The only tricky part is just getting the actual circle and the actual follow path animation to work. But when it works, you can just 
easily bake your dynamic paint and then start rendering. Hopefully you found this tutorial easy enough to follow, useful enough to try. Thank you so much for the support on my previous videos. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment. I always read those. I always enjoy reading those, getting ideas also from you guys. That's it. So see you in the next one.